Hello, and welcome to this episode of Military Mutterings, where your hosts, I, Jack Fletcher, and my good friend, me, Kevin Janssen, shall be discussing the Admiral Hipper class, Heavy Cruiser, and Surface Raider. Here are some general characteristics. She's armed with... 8 203mm or 8 inch CK SKC 34 guns in a 4 times 2 configuration. Now, Kevin, I know you wanted to add something here. Yeah, like something interesting to add into this. So, everybody thinks of the 203s on the Aquan Hipper class. Like in the early stages, they wanted to give the three first ones of this class to two or threes. And we'll, we'll get into each, each individual ship later in this video. But the last two of the class, they were planning to give those 150mm guns in triple mounting, so 4 times 3 mm, And I think, they're, I think they'll be the same guns seen on something like the Cullen or Nuremberg class uh, mm. cruisers. Weren't they originally going to be um, like a subclass? Yeah, maybe actually. Like, like it, it, it was only considered in the beginning. Later, later on, they thought, well, let's not do it. Let's just give them the 203s. But... I, I guess they would have become a subclass of their own, yeah. Fair. And for additional armaments, you're looking at 12 105mm 4.1 inch SKC 33 guns in a 6x2 configuration. I believe they are in the same mounts as the 88mm as well, correct? Yeah, they are. Like the, Those are the rather interesting looking naval twin mounts. You see them on basically every type of cruiser uh, Germany has built. Yes, uh, from that period, anyway. Yeah, from that period. <laughs> yes, uh, you're also looking at uh, 12 37mm or 1.5 inch SKC30 guns in, again, a 6x2 configuration. However, this varies from ship to ship. And not only that, what kind of 37mm are these? Well, these were... <sighs> When when people think of German 37s, they think of like the high fire rate, sort of the rivals to the Bofors. But these early ones are just single shot um, twin mountings. Like they're they have a really high velocity, but them being single shot really gave them a lower fire rate than something like an auto cannon. Mm. So like Germany had these on basically all of their ships in the beginning, but as soon as any sort of World War II refit came along, they quickly uh, switched these out. For the much more higher fire rate of 37 mm auto cannons. Yeah, so not only does this vary ship to ship, but there are also some occasions on some refits, now I don't know which one specifically, of the 37s being swapped out for 40 mm bofors that have been captured, correct? Yeah, well, I don't know if they're captured though, but like, Germany was also one of the. Well, isn't the 40 mm bofors used by pretty much every single nation uh, every single power during world war ii even the mm. japanese <laughs> this is true yes um and she the uh, class again this depends on ship to ship but uh, they can also be armed with a number of 20 millimeter or 0.79 inch cannons and this depends on the variety of cannon and the variety of number and there's not really much to say about them they're just 20 millimeter cannons i think during the beginning when they were first laid down all ships were identical, mm. but as they went along, s stuff got added to the ships, and just um, primary weaponry all stayed the same, and also also the one of fives, but like the smaller ones just started to change yeah. drastically, as can be expected. Um, and she's also armed, and I feel I'm the, as though I must mention this as well, with twelve. 533 millimeter or 21 inch torpedoes now were these torpedoes actually any good i've heard that what well, german torpedoes were when you compare them to something like a japanese long lance they, they don't add up mm. like they, they, you cannot compare those but out of all of the german torpedoes available i do think these were some of the better ones yes. and i think range wise they have like around 12 kilometers or something which is not bad at all Yes. Now, in terms of speed, the Admiral Hipper class is um, quite comparable to its, you know, c to contemporary cruisers, I would say. I mean, you know, 32 knots, which for you uh, landlubbers is 37 miles an hour or 59 kilometers per hour. That's a pretty decent speed considering the armament. Oh, yeah. And armor, let's say. Like, armor is a bit... 
But if, if we really, if we if we want to compl uh, completely explain the armor, we'll be here for like another forty five minutes. But like, yes. just in short, it's got a really good belt with, with a small little turtle back. So yeah, armor is also really nice on these ships. Hmm. Excellent. Now let us begin with our first ship. Admiral so yeah, the Hipper. first one, yeah, the Admiral Hipper. So this was the first one laid down of the class. She was laid down in on the sixth of July in nineteen thirty five. Eventually launched in on the 6th of February 1937 and finally commissioned on the 29th of April 1937. Now, being the first one of the class, like in the, in the beginning, she didn't really do a whole lot, but as soon as World War II came around, well, she was part of a lot of different battles. And let's just go over some, I don't know, w worthy opponents, I would say. So during the operation of Wesser, that's an interesting word, Wesserubung or something Vesserubung. like that. Yeah, th that word. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm probably going to mispronounce a lot of things too. Like Admiral Hipper is a, a simple name to pronounce, but the other ones could be go a little bit south. Doesn't matter. But during that operation, she actually destroyed a uh, British G class destroyer, HMS Glowworm. Which is sadly. Uh, <laughs> HMS Glowworm. Oh, imagine a destroyer with that name. I would crap my pants. Especially in modern day, you know, break out into Third World War. Quick, send HMS Glowworm. <laughs> She'll glow in the night. She'll shine the way through. Yeah, let's continue. Uh, yeah, so later on, she uh, also was a lot. Uh, she was a part of the, uh, I think, the convoy raider groups in the Atlantic, just trying to pick away off of the Allied um, supplies coming in. And there, she also she, she had a, she had engaged multiple different sort of ships that were a part of protecting the convoys. But one sort of stood out to me as the County Class Cruiser HMS Berwick. Here she actually had quite a little bit of a fighting with her. So she first started engaging a convoy and she didn't quite see that the Berwick and some of the other escort destroyers were also there. So when she eventually realized, oh crap, I'm a bit outgunned here, she started to turn around and start firing with the rear guns while HMS Berwick was still following her around. So uh, it's a little bit of an interesting story if you ask me. Now the last battle she was part of was the Battle of the Barren Sea. Um, here, in the end, she was actually badly damaged by the British. She was also decommissioned shortly after, on the 28th of February 1943. It's a sort of that time period where um, Adolf Hitler just sort of lost faith in the Navy and just started decommissioning a whole bunch of ships. And sadly, Admiral Hipper was a part of that. Uh, but even though she was decommissioned, she was still being repaired, as sort of like a hope of using her later on. But on the 3rd of May 1945, she was attacked by RAF bombers and also scuttled on the exact same day. She was eventually raised again in 1948 till 1952, but of course this was only to scrap her, and only her bell remains. Which is kind of sad, really. It would have been nice if they kept a turret or something, but it's only the bell that we have now. Mm, one of the many unfortunate events. Anything else to add onto this, uh, onto this particular ship? Well, I could have probably talked way more about this ship, because considering this one actually fought a lot during World War II, I think it's just... I'm, I'm going to keep it like this. We've got the, all the other ships to go over as well, so... Yes, we don't want to be here all day. Or do we? <laughs> That's one of the many questions. Next ship. Mm. Oh dear. Now, this is the Prinz Eugen. Well... Was, was Prince Eugen, <laughs> should I say. Laid down on the 23rd of April, 1936, launched 22nd August, 1938, and finally commissioned on the 1st of August, 1940. She saw some action, all right. She took part in the Battle of the Denmark Strait, Strait with the Bismarck against the Hood and Prince of Wales, and not only that, but um, she was transferred to Norway for a short time where she was badly damaged by a British Trident-class submarine and returned to Germany and, uh, well, surrendered on the um, 8th of May 1945 to the US Navy, and here's the grisly part. Now, you have this wonderful trophy ship, you know, one of the last, if not the last of her kind, aside from, you know, well, actually, no, it wasn't the last of her kind, but fully intact, you know, one of the last. I think she was the last fully intact. Yeah, definitely. And like, the, the Admiral Hipper was in pieces somewhere in the water, so... <laughs> precisely. And, um, well, unfortunately, she was then towed to, um... 
to um, Bikini Atoll, um, well not towed, but she went to Bikini Atoll as part of Operation Crossroads to be used in nuclear testing. And afterwards, she was then towed to, um, and I'm going to pronounce this horribly, <laughs> Kwajalein, Kwajalein Atoll, where she unfortunately capsized. And Yikes. this is where she is now. Poor little sod. It's a really sad ending of a ship that was in perfect condition at the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Well, she's not the only ship that suffered that fate, sadly. Even yes. on the Allied side, you know, even the Allies scrapped a whole bunch of their really interesting ships in the end. Christ, I know this is a slight divergence, but I mean, look at the poor fate of HMS Dreadnought, the first of her kind, bloody scrapped. Yeah. Unceremoniously so, I believe 1920. But then again, trying to keep these old ships afloat is a really big struggle. Yes. And very expensive, so... I'm surprised the US is still able to keep their four battleships. Was it five? Um, well, still... isn't, isn't one of them at the constant threat of sinking? Mm, probably. Right, next ship, before we diverge too far. <laughs> We're getting out of hand. Alright, so next up we've got the Lutzo. I hope I've pronounced that one right. Um... This one has a very interesting story, which involves the Russians as well. So the photo you see there is, uh, is the Lutso, well, actually in Russian service, renamed to Tallinn. And I do think you've misspelled there. You, I think it has one extra N. There's oh two dear. N's. Yes. Or does it, actually? Maybe I'm wrong. Then again, I don't speak Russian, so what does Maybe it matter? Maybe there is no N, and there never <laughs> will be. Continue. So, when the Germans were building the Admiral Hipper class, the Russians were looking at them and think, well, that's pretty nice, actually. So, the Russians went ahead and asked if they could have, I think, almost all of the ships of the Admiral Hipper class. So, the Germans, of course, reply with, yeah, no, that ain't gonna happen. We've got five, have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can just have one of them. And this one was the Lutso. Uh, I believe this was the last one of the Admiral Hipper class being built. And this one was um, still during under the, under construction, and the Germans already had four of the other ones also being built. So they thought, let's give the fifth one out. So it was sold to the Russians. Now, um, this ship, actually, before we get into the Russian side of things, she was originally laid down on the 2nd of August, 1937. And she was launched on the 1st of July, 1939. But then, in 1940, the Russians got them, and they renamed the Lutso to... Oh, please hold my beer for this one. Petropavlovsk or something like that? That certainly is a name. Yeah. But um, one thing to note here, what well, an important thing too, she did not have all of her armaments here. So the Germans sold her to, uh, to the Russians. And she was still lacking a lot of, well, basically all her entire bridge and even uh, the smoke funnel, I believe. And she only had two turrets placed on it. Although one of them only had the guns. So the Russians still had a lot of work to do before they were actually able to get this thing going. But they did rename it to the Project 83, or sort of like the class the Russians work with. Anyway, skipping forward a little bit, in 1944 she was renamed to Tallinn, which is the photo or the ship you see right before you right now. And in 1953, so way after the war, she was still floating about and she was renamed to a Dnep Dnepr? Man, these Russian names are very annoying. But yeah... Honestly, there's not a whole lot to say here. She did serve as a um, non, what is it, non non moving or a non powered floating battery. So she she did fight a little bit against the Germans under the Russian surface. But yeah, ironic. in the end, she was just yeah very ironic. But in the end, she was just converted to a barrack ship and well, eventually just scrapped, like all the others of this class. Mm. Anything else you want to add about this particular vessel? Yeah, actually, before I forget, the Russians, of course, saw the potential of this ship, so they had many different ideas made up for what we should arm it with. Now, the main idea was just to continue it as she was going to be in German surface, so get their hands on the two or threes, finish it that way. But another idea was to give it four triple 180mm guns, or maybe even four triple 152mm guns that you see on the PR-68, which I believe is the... Svetlov class cruiser in the European standards. No idea. 
But it would have been very nice to see a Russian modified Admiral Hipper class with the 180s. I think mm. the 180s would have been very nice to have on a ship like this. Would have been like a conglomerate of a um, of an Admiral Hipper class and a Kirov class. Yeah, exactly. Only way way stronger, if you ask me. Mm, yes. <laughs> a Kirov is not exactly known for its armor. Mm, fair. So, anything else you want to add, or shall we move on to our next ship? Uh, let, let's move on. We've got two more to go. Yes, on to our most, one of our most unfortunate cases. Aww. Oh, no. <laughs> Blucher. Probably said that wrong, but before we go into the unfortunate tale of this ship, allow me to give you the basics. Laid down on the 15th of August 1936, launched on the 8th of June 1937, and commissioned on the 20th of September 1939. Oh dear for this ship indeed. <laughs> right, let's just get to the rather unfortunate part, shall we? Because for any of you who know a bit about naval history, that's probably what you want to hear. So I shall tell it. On the 9th of April 1940, at Oslo Fjord, at the Battle of the Drobak Sound... This ship, you know, was sailing up all nice, big, Admiral Hipper-like, and then from the ancient fortress of Oscarborg Fortress, you know, who would have guessed it, <laughs> was shelled by some by a pair of antiquated 283mm guns, I believe. And, yeah, uh, 283, uh, that's, that's the standard calibre of most f old fortress guns, yeah. But yeah, yes. go on, sorry. And was, um, you know, of course, she'll buy some other smaller calibre stuff. You know, that, that was all fine, that was all fine. And then the torpedoes hit. Very old torpedoes from this old Russian fort caused a, um, I believe it was one of the rear magazines, I believe... Well, either way, all you need to know is fire broke out in the ship, was completely uncontrollable, and it ended up capsizing and sinking, leading to a heavy loss of life. So who would win a super modern heavy cruiser of the Kriegsmarine or an old bloody piece of concrete <laughs> with some torpedoes this, this and old guns? Fortress. Yeah, couldn't make this How up long? if tried. How many years did she serve anyways before she died less than a year now that's a bad investment military wise <laughs> yeah it, it it's a rather unfortunate tale i mean it has um it's been protected ever you know it's been um you know protected so that um people can't you know go around nicking parts and one of the float planes was actually um um, uncovered and was uh, bought up, which is a rather happy ending. So more <laughs> parts of this ship exist than most other bloody uh, Hipper classes. That's more than the Admiral Hipper, that's for sure. Yes, and this one served, I think, the least. Maybe not, with our final ship. Take it away, Kevin! Well, yeah. Say, say, uh, well, side okay, lids. Hold on. <laughs> yes, side, side lids. This one... Well, I'm pretty sure the Blusher has more of an interesting story than this one, because this one was never actually fully completed. So she was laid down on the 29th of December 1936, just before the New Year, so you think about it. She was launched on the 19th of January 1939. But she was never commissioned, never put into any service, because, well, she was never completed. That's the problem. The ship was actually 95% done right around 1939, but around this time... Um, well, actually, in 1941, the Bismarck was, of course, lost in a very interesting um, last-ditch effort the British had against it. <laughs> I think you'll, uh, you'll know plenty about that, don't you, Jack? Don't believe me, but continue. <laughs> but, um, yeah, after the Bismarck was uh, destroyed, the Germans sort of saw the potential of aircraft carriers. And therefore, they decided that it was best for this ship, was that more hipper class, to be converted into an auxiliary aircraft carrier. Now, with other carriers like the Graf Zeppelin being built, and these were actually dedicated carriers, this one being, well, a heavy cruiser at heart, was just going to be an auxiliary aircraft carrier. 
Now, with all the changes to um, this ship, of course, the weapon reef is going to be greatly different, uh, gr greatly changed around as well. So there's no no sort of primary weaponry on board this ship. We start off with 10 105 mm guns. These are still the same twin mounts that we see on the regular class, but this one, this time, it's got five of them. Two were on the front, and three of them were on the rear. It also had 10 37s in dual mounts and 24 20 mm guns in quadruple mounts. So we see a, a great change here. There's no sort of large caliber guns. It's all just dedicated to anti-aircraft weaponry. Around this time, the ship was also renamed to uh, Vesser or Vesser, some, something along those lines. Visa? 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 <laughs> mm. yeah. Interesting. Who knows? But of course, it being an aircraft carrier, it also has to have planes. Now, these planes were going to be a total of 20 of them could be carried. Those being 10 BF-109Ts. And if you don't know, the BF-109T is a naval version of the BF-109E. Just got longer wings, isn't it? Yeah, it's got longer wings, they of course fold up, and it's got the uh, arrestor hook to make sure that it actually can land on the bloody thing. And also it's going to have 10 navalized J87 Stukas. Now for the Stukas, I see them referring the J87E as a name, but there are also photos of the C versions with foldable wings, so I don't know which exact ones that we're going to be using on it. But yeah, in the end, um, she was never actually converted into an aircraft carrier. The photo you see before you is, well, her being turned into it. But it was never actually finished. Sadly, I would have actually liked to see an Admiral Aper class as an aircraft carrier, to be honest. Bloody small aircraft carrier, I tell you something. Yeah, but you know, small but good. <laughs> yeah, mind you, it doesn't need to be big for an auxiliary carrier, does it? No, really doesn't. I mean, look at what the Japanese did, you know, they turned a Yamato-class carrier, a y Yamato class battleship into a carrier, but that didn't carry any planes at all. Of, we turned a bunch of bloody whaling ships into makeshift aircraft carriers. <laughs> Even the Dutch we had, um... Oh, you know, we're getting off track, Let, yes, that's, that's, let's, let's move along. Story for another day. Yeah, probably. So on the, uh, she eventually, on the 29th of January 1945, the ship was scuttled, because the, uh, the Russians were, of course, advancing into Germany at an alarming rate. Um, the Russians did find the wreck, of course, and remember, the Russians had the uh, cruiser Lutso. I, and they're here, they've... Uh, what did you want to say? I assume that it went through their heads, we can use parts of this to finish that. Nah, sort of, actually. So they saw this one being, hey, it's the same ship, the same class, we can finish this one too, according to our new different changes for the Lutso. But, um... Yeah, this was not done. <laughs> having to completely repair an old scuttled ship and having the Lutso that wasn't even going to be finished according to Russian standards too, yeah, that was never going to happen. So, drumroll please, what do you think would happen? Scrapped in, the end, in 1952? Yep, she was scrapped. Another sad ending of an Admiral Hipper class. Mm-hmm. All of them have sad endings, really, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I guess the Prince Eugen went out with a bang, almost literally being nuked to death. <laughs> yeah. At least, at least Prince Eugen was still in one piece after the war. Yes, and relatively speaking, still is. I mean, you know, it's only capsized and irradiated, but you know. Yeah, in, in before somebody decides to scrap it too. Mm, well, that's going to be a bloody job, isn't it? You got to go all the <laughs> way out to find it, and then you got to scrap it whilst in your housemat suit. Yeah, and then we've got very old, rusted away metal. Just what we needed. Yes, as as it is as the gods would have wanted. <laughs> right. Exactly. I think we've muttered on for quite enough. Yeah, is I think there so anything too. you want to add before we close? Actually, come to think of it, something that I quite like about these, um, about the Admiral Hipper class, it's sort of like the only, what I would call, heavy cruiser that Germany operated. All the other ones were like the, the Panzer ships, you know, the one with the 280mm guns. I wouldn't really consider those heavy cruisers anymore. They're more like pocket battleships. Yes, well, we call so, them pocket battleship for propaganda terms, but they're more like battle cruisers. Yeah. But like, if you just think about it, the Admiral Hipper class is the only, the only class of ship that most people would just consider a heavy cruiser class. Mm. Yes. Hmm. Universally just accepted. Just That's a heavy cruiser. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, so sir, we've muttered on for quite enough, and that was episode two of Military Mutterings. And join us next week where we discuss an aircraft. 
We won't tell mm. you which one, so keep an eye out on social media for the announcement. And as always, stay safe and enjoy existence. Goodbye, everyone. And a happy new year. Let's not forget that. Yes, and a happy new year. Yay.